Friends, it's Scott. We're back with this week's Friday Five. We have just been so overwhelmed with the amount of support and the interest in this series, so we're going to keep it going for you. This week, we got another exciting and interesting five items that we're going to jump into. And with that, let's not waste any more time. Let's get into it. Number one, we're kicking things off this week at Gristmill Park. On Monday, October 28th at 6 o'clock in the log cabin, the town's going to be hosting an open house forum to talk more about the ongoing study with the Army Corps of Engineers on the Royal River. The event's going to be hosted by the Royal River Task Force, which was established by the town council just a few weeks ago. And their task is to look at the draft report, ask some pertinent questions, learn from the community, and report out to the town council before they figure out their next steps. So we hope to see you there. Number two, okay, this week we're starting a new segment where we are going to highlight some local businesses and have them share some of the cool things that they've got going on in town. Today, we're kicking things off at Attic and Eve, They're right on the corner of Portland and in, uh, in Maine next to the Rosemont block. Uh, and I think Crystal has some stuff she wants to tell us. Come on. We're here with Crystal Hinks of Attic and Eve. Thanks so much for having us. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about what brought you to Yarmouth. So um, about two years ago, my husband and I purchased a shop in Wiscasset, and um, we wanted to get closer to home, more of a small town feel. Yeah. Um, and one day, my husband was walking by the shop and saw a sign in the window and we were rented it was day. meant to be <laughs> it was meant to it be it was meant to be you grew up here right yes great. yes and your husband grew up here yep we both so local yarmouth folks coming back and starting businesses it's a great story yep so tell us a little bit about it, it sounds like there's some spooky season festivities yeah. in the plans for this weekend yeah so this saturday um i was approached by tamson bickford from <laughs> the kismet foundation um to sponsor an event down at the Bickford Pavilion, um, where the farmer's market normally is. And from three to five on Saturday, we'll be doing a uh, fun event for the kiddos, costume contests for kids and pets and games and prizes Amazing. for everyone and all the fun stuff. Great. So Attic and Eve is one of the a few business sponsors here in town for that event. It should be a great time. Put on your uh, your your uh, capes and your in your ghost outfits, and you'll be ready to go. Don't have put too fun. much on though, because it's gonna be hot. It's gonna be hot. <laughs> That's great. That's great. That's great. So if you have a small business here in Yarmouth and you want to highlight some of the cool things you've got going on uh, through the fi Friday Five, shoot me an email. My uh, contact information is available on the town's website. Thanks so much for having us, Crystal, and for participating in this week's Friday Five. Thank you so much. We're happy to be here. Great. Number three, a couple weeks ago, we had talked about some new signs that are going to be displaying all over Route 1 and on Main Street, the beautiful blue signs that everybody loves. So after a few years of uh, rebranding exercise with a lot of different stakeholders, we came up with what we think is a really exciting new brand, and I'm wearing it right now. Um, one of the first things that we wanted to really focus on was some placemaking, some things that folks see all the time that's representative of the town of Yarmouth. And I'm here with Clay Bublack from Neil Craft Science. They're helping us do that. So uh, what are you holding here, Clay? Well, this is actually the, the graphics that are going to go on one of the, the signs yep. to direct you to, well, Yarmouth, Yarmouth High School. School. Uh, I don't know if you can really see it very well there, but there is it is a, a beautiful silver vinyl that is reflective. So yep. it's going to be uh, seen well at night. Yep. And it's going to go on that dark blue background of those panels. And it's, it's going to show up beautifully. It's pop. Night. It'll pop. That's great. So, as I mentioned, this is a first of a multi-phase uh, retrofit of our existing wayfinding signage. This first phase is really focused on Route 1 from the Cousins River Bridge all the way to Tyler Technologies uh, and throughout our Main Street corridor. And so you'll start to see there's maybe a, a few new pops here as well, in addition to really just kind of retrofitting our existing blue wayfinding signs that look very similar to what they are now, just with a new with a new brand. There's also going to be two new gateway signs that are going to welcome folks on either end of Route 1, so over towards the intersection of East Elm Street and near Exit 15, headed northbound on Route 1. So we're super, super excited. Clay says within the next couple of weeks, they'll be installed. You might start to see public work starting to take down the old wayfinding signs. Don't worry, we're keeping those beautiful clipper ships, uh, and we'll be able to uh, see the bright new 
maintenance free, super bright, and uh, and inform and, and informative uh, wayfinding signs here in the next couple of weeks. That's we're looking forward cool. to it. Well, thanks for the tour, Clay. You're very More is going to be on this. We're going to have a full uh, a full video that's going to show you the sort of start to finish of uh, how these signs were made in a couple of weeks here. Check that out on our uh, on our town YouTube page. Number four, we're here in beautiful Brattsbrook Park today and I'm with my friend, Medi Smith. Medi serves as our sustainability coordinator and has some updates on our most our recently adopted climate action plan. That's right, thanks Scott. So the climate action plan was adopted by the town council last spring in 2024 and it lays out targets for the town to reduce greenhouse gas emissions that we generate, mm -hmm. both in terms of town and school operational activities and also as a community. So it has those targets so that we can reduce our greenhouse gas emissions and also has um, actions that relate to our community resilience. So this is a really important plan for the town of Yarmouth. It's our first climate mm -hmm. action plan. Um, and we're getting started um, implementing this plan with the Climate Action Board. So the Climate Action Board is a group of 15 members that are really active and passionate yeah. about advancing sustainability in Yarmouth. Um, and we have a couple of vacancies open that we'd really Great. love to fill. Great. This is a really interesting project because it was first brought up to us as a community from a, a set of high school students or a group of high school students who are really worried about our climate future and about our sort of reliance on, on, uh, on greenhouse gases. And so what started as a, a student-led uh, emergency climate declaration has now sort of transformed into, a, into a, a climate action plan that this group, and we're hoping a few more volunteers will help sort of shepherd and, uh, and work on over the next few years. That's right. So the climate action plan is broken into different focus areas and topics, and the climate action board is mimicking that organization. So the board is broken up into four action teams or subgroups. So that is circular economy, natural environment, buildings, transportation, and energy, and Community resilience. Great. You got them. Not, to, not to be them. forgotten. Very important. <laughs> um, and so we're welcoming individuals to participate just in those teams. Yeah. If they don't have the time to commit to being um, a member of the full board, we welcome people to learn about what the board is doing and yeah. get engaged um, with as much time as they have to support projects moving ahead. That's a good point. We're going to wrap up here. If you want to learn more about uh, volunteer opportunities, check out the town's website. We also, it's a little bit of a cliffhanger on our next item number five. Number five. As Mehdi mentioned before, there are lots of opportunities for volunteering here in Yarmouth. And uh, we're going to put that on display on November 14th at the Rose School. It's going to be our first ever volunteer fair. Uh, we'll have folks from boards and committees here at the town and organizations and nonprofits throughout Yarmouth to share a little bit more about what they do and opportunities to get involved. So from 5.30 to 7.30, November 14th, over at the Rose School, we hope to see you there. Now, it wouldn't be a Friday Five if I didn't tell you about the upcoming election because, believe it or not, it's still happening. November 5th, Yarmouth High School, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Please come do your de democratic duty. Come see Lisa and Ruth and the rest of the gang at the uh, at the polls. It's really important that you do that. But in the meantime, we've had a lot of people come by early and vote in person or through absentee at the town office. So uh, there's an important question on the ballot, uh, more than president, way more than that, is uh, our wastewater and infrastructure bond question. So it's question number one. So figured... I'd give you a sort of a sneak peek behind the scenes of our town office. We'll learn a little bit more about it from Steve Johnson, our town engineer. This is our planning and development and code section of the town office, spanning from our code enforcement officer, Nick Trimbley, to Aaron Zwerko, our director of planning and development. She's hiding in that office somewhere. If you come on back here, we've got a few more faces to introduce you to. Karen Stover, doing her best to hide from the camera, is an uh, administrative assistant for both public works and for engineering. She is wonderful and uh, is uh, obviously excited to be a part of this, uh, this production. Over here, Julie Dubofsky, assistant planner to the stars, also Spirit of Excellence award winner, also excited to be on, the, on this week's broadcast. So uh, we'll keep, uh, in a, we'll keep, uh, come this way, we'll keep uh, embarrassing some people. 
Are you good? Tori Hill, not here right now. Economic development director, does a phenomenal job. If you've got a small business, come talk to Tori. But the most important person in the building, according to Steve Johnson, is our town engineer, Steve Hello, Johnson. Mr. Scott LaFlamme. Hello, Leo. So we, we're, we're just sort of dropping in and surprising everybody, but we're just letting them know when the election is, how to vote early, and more importantly, more information on the bond question that we've got. Do you have two seconds to tell them a little bit more about what it is and why people should care about it? Well, yeah, thank you very much, Scott. Uh, I'd love to talk about the project. So uh, one of the larger projects is the Harbor Pump Station job that is a project to replace our main pump station that conveys about 85% of our wastewater from the collection system to the uh, wastewater plant for treatment. So that pump station is it was constructed back in the mid 60s and it is getting very near the end of its life. It was upgraded in the early 90s and that was 30 years ago. So it's at the end of its life. So it's very critical that uh, we have that very important infrastructure replaced. It, it just needs to. And if not, I want to make sure that it's important because we wouldn't want to uh, violate some of our licensing uh, for uh, our Clean Water Act. So that, that's a critical project. and I hope folks can support that. Uh, another key project and a great project is the East Main Street Bridge. Uh, that bridge carries East Main Street over Pratt's Brook. Uh, that bridge is owned by the town uh, because it's a, a shorter length. So it is in very rough shape and Maine Department of Transportation has been inspecting it over the last uh, several years, pointing out to the town what rough shape it is in. So we've been working to get a uh, uh, design and a cost to replace it. And that project is uh, also on the uh, on the bond issue that's gonna be uh, voted on in November. The last project is a uh, another very important project on Cousins Island. It's the uh, Cousins Island Safety Way, which is a off-road uh, pedestrian walkway that goes all the way from Sandy Point Beach to Wharf Road on the island. So uh, that has been in service since the 70s, and as such, it's it's getting a little long in the tooth. So it's going to require quite a bit of effort to uh, improve it, make sure it is ADA accessible, meets all the standards, also have crosswalks that are important for each of the intersections at the roads, and also there'll be some stormwater uh, drainage and uh potentially ledge that needs to be uh, removed as part of the project. So those are three very important projects that uh, add up to about $10.5 million. If you want to see some more great uh, information on it, I think Leo mentioned to me today that uh, all three of these projects are featured on the town's website on the front page. And there's some great video in there that uh, was done by Sean Cork, our uh, uh, superstar uh, gaff, I guess it would be. And so uh, I urge folks to take a look at that. Cool. Did that cover it, folks? That's great. Thanks, Steve. Well, thank you very much for the Perfect. time to be here on this great uh, production yeah. of Yarmouth. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> thank you, Steve, and thank you for uh, for watching us again this week. Is that, if you have any uh, projects or if you have any questions that you want to have covered in next week's or another week's worth of, uh, of Friday Fives, be sure to let us know, uh, and you can find us on the town's website, yarmouth.me.us. Bye. <laughs>